Good evening, aviators. Happy Sunday. I hope you are all doing well. Sorry, it was a little bit of a later post this week. I've been super, super busy. I just passed a few tests. Um, I just wrote a couple essays that were like eight pages long. It's been kind of crazy lately. But this week, I was able to put up a poll on my story on Instagram and Facebook regarding topics once again. And I would like to apologize to my viewers on different time zones with how late this is going up. You weren't able to see this probably until Monday. Um, I would like to apologize about that. But anyways, I was able to get a pull up on my story talking about which, like what topics to do. And you guys chose surprise. So surprise, surprise. Welcome to this week's podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And this week's topic is going to be kind of two topics combined into one. So I decided to um, kind of mesh together being a leader and the topic of aviation history and you. So we're kind of flip-flopping the weeks back and forth here. Um, not too much of a surprise, I guess, but um, if anybody ever has topic ideas please put them in the comments because I'm always looking for more uh feedback and uh topic ideas um so without further ado let's just kind of get into it so I wanted to start off with the fact that this week is the 4th of July it's crazy how quickly time moves by as um I mean just in general this semester has gone by so fast and I am very, very eager to further my way through. We are over halfway done. I just did my stage, my first stage check for private, just kidding, instrument, my instrument rating. Holy cow, um, which was crazy, but I absolutely love this semester. So the reason why I kind of wanted to talk about being a leader and your history in aviation is because of July 4th um, and we have so much to be grateful for in um, in life and I am beyond grateful for the men and women who have served this country and here on my page um, we all honor the men and women who have valiantly served their countries and I would just like to take a moment to deeply, deeply thank those who have served and those who are serving. It is of deep gratitude and wonderful, wonderful admiration because without you, none of this would be possible and I would not be making my dream come true. And thank you so much for the freedoms that we have um, but yeah, so first things first, being a leader. So I thought this was really interesting because I just got done writing an essay that was partially about this. And so I thought that, well, why not include it in my options for podcast topics? Because I just felt like it was, it was kind of ironic to talk about. And the majority of you guys actually did choose being a leader, which kind of surprised me. So I would like to know why. So the reason why I brought this up was mainly to focus on aviation as a whole. Um, one thing that you don't realize or probably won't realize while becoming a pilot is the fact that being a leader is so important. And I say that for a, a couple reasons. And the main reason being that you're in charge of an aircraft. You're, you're, you're flying the plane. You're acting as pilot in command. Um, even if you're second in command, I mean, you're, you're still in charge of an aircraft. Um, second of all, I have to have to bring up the fact that you are, um, you are not just pilot in command of an aircraft. You are taking passengers. You're, you're in charge of payload, of cargo, of people, uh, whatever, you name it. And so being able to step up and be a leader is very important. But not only in aviation you just have in life in general. Being a leader and being able to take responsibility for yourself and um, practice self-discipline and time management. It all goes hand in hand to be able to be a leader 
for yourself. Um, and there's been several examples of leaders that I just kind of want to touch on briefly here. One of them is Amelia Earhart. Um, this week is celebrating a lot of history, a lot of change, uh, movement, and freedom. So Amelia, she was, if you don't know who Amelia Earhart was, she is one of the sole women female pioneers in aviation that has really brought together the advocacy for females in aviation. She was a brilliant, brilliant soul and, and the things that she did still surprise me to this day with the amount of uh, hatred she got and the amount of people who didn't like her for what she did, which, which is so bizarre, I think. But then again, we have to remember that things were different back at that time. Things were different and she, she was really setting forth an image, a picture, uh, maybe even an idea for future females to say, hey, this is okay. We can, we can bring in more females. We, we can still fly too. And which also co connects me to Jacqueline Cochran, who really organized the WASPs, or better known as the Women Air Force Service Pilots, back during World War II. Which these were, this was a group of females who were leading. They were learning to lead. They were changing the stigmas and um, pushing forward and helping out with the war. So they were some of the the ones who aren't quite talked about as much. Um, and I also have to add in Wilbur and Orville Wright. It would be wrong to not include them because they were absolutely a a leader in aviation because they took matters into their own hands and really changed the world to what it is today and it's really hard to believe i was doing some research and the first flight took flight over a hundred years ago this industry is just baby compared to some of the other ones these this industry is so young and so fresh but yet you think about we go back in time and travel to the right flyer the very first powered flight that ever happened and then we jump ahead a little bit to the biplanes and the world world war um two fighters and you have the p-51 you have um my favorite, personally, one of my favorite planes is the, definitely the T-6 Texan, but even more so the B-25. These planes were absolutely amazing in what they did. But you go from the first powered flight to the, the war fighters, and then you go to, um more supersonic and the 747s um and you have the 707 the 727 and then you jump forward again into more like i i don't even know what they'd call it at this point but very very current modern and we have things like the airbus beluga the the boeing 737 max and you have new revolutionized planes, the Cirrus SR-22 Turbo, or even just the newer updated Cessnas. I mean, aviation is pretty much endless, but recognizing and going back in time and realizing who were the leaders that impacted this industry and how can I better be like them is something of utmost importance. Because I've truly seen that as I go out, go out into the world, and progress throughout my you know certifications as a pilot it's it's really challenged me to think about well how did i get to where i want to be what what leader got me there and i think that's amazing because i mean parents are leaders we have teachers that are leaders we have 
government leaders, the list goes on and on, but who really got you to where you are? Your parents and the people that came before you in the industry you're going into. So with that being said, using other people's inspirations to push forward and pioneer a new time, a new era, and implementing new ideas and change into the world is honestly my goal. I want to be able to see not just females, I want all people um, to come into aviation, to come fly, enjoy the skies, because there is so much reward just being up in the sky. Once those wheels take off, leave the ground, it's unspeakable. I've had so many wonderful experiences throughout my time and my training as a pilot, and I'm not even on to career yet. I'm just cruising through this program, and I still, every single day, I there is so much to be grateful for. But I wanted to really um, mention and thank the people who have come before me, who have inspired me, who have raised me, and um, who have really set off to change the world for what it is. Because without them, it really wouldn't be possible. Um, and, and secondly, so I wanted to kind of continue and sidetrack this into aviation history and you. A lot of people don't realize that what they're doing now can change the world in the future. And I set forward to have a discussion about both of these topics because they really do go hand in hand. I didn't really realize that I could combine both of these topics into one video, but here we are. So, I mean, aviation history and you, whatever you're doing now is pioneering new ideas, new new innovations and change for the world. And I... I love aviation, and so whatever happens to this industry happens, but I would really, really love to see more people coming into this industry and being being a pilot, and I guess I can connect this to the perspective of flight. I know that was another topic, but the... Just being able to set forth and do something that is so great, so grand, and really marvelous, if you think about it. Um, something that people long ago thought was impossible. And I like to think deeply about what words mean. I'm really an English guru, <laughs> if you think about it, which is quite strange. But... I was going to get a degree in English prior to my adventures as a pilot, but in the long run, that didn't work out, and I decided, nope, being a pilot is for me a little bit more than English. So I kind of use my blog as a, as a writing in a an English corner, I guess. <laughs> but um, I really just wanted to say that perspective, What what does that mean? Perspective really can be broken down into a couple of definitions, and the main one being a thought or an idea, a change in something. So if you really think about perspective, like, what is your perspective about aviation? It's going to change once you get up in the air, because nothing, nothing ever stays the same once you experience it. You can hear people talk about flying all day long, and fall in love with it but in the long run is it really something that you know that that answer is a no because you haven't experienced it so i really really encourage everyone to get out and explore and really figure out what you want to do um take an intro flight Go just jump in and start flight lessons, honestly, because if it's if it's a good idea and you believe it's a good idea, 
then go ahead and just take flight lessons because it is absolutely rewarding. But anyways, this podcast is a little bit short this week. I have a lot I have to do this week. And watch out for next week's podcast because it's going to be epic. I am doing kind of like a 4th of July special. So we will see how that turns out. But it's been really, really nice here in Cedar. I want to leave with a couple of remarks here. But it's been really nice here in Cedar City, Utah. We have had, we just hit 90 degrees. And that is crazy because I remember past Junes, we would get about, I'd say halfway through the month and it'd be 90. And then towards the end of the month, it'd be almost in the hundreds. But then July, July was hot. So it really astounds me the fact that we just hit 100 and it's July, or 90, sorry, and it's July 2nd. That is, it's just, it's crazy, I think. The weather has been really weird. So a couple of last minute tips here. I've had people ask. What topics do you recommend to study up prior to starting flight training? So that's that's actually pretty interesting because I there's a couple of things that I wish I would have known. So, and there's really two things. Number one is weather. Any knowledge you can gather about weather, that is amazing. Um, watch videos. There's lots of videos on YouTube. You know, uh, make sure you know what the adiabatic lapse rate is. Make sure you know cold front, warm front, occluded, stationary fronts. Um, Stages of a thunderstorm. Things like that. Look up METAR and TAFs. Learn how to decode those. Because you're going to need that knowledge to become a pilot. The second topic is aerodynamics. Um... For, in my opinion, aerodynamics, it varies per person. But in my opinion, aerodynamics and meteorology weather are the two hardest topics for ground knowledge as a pilot. I don't know. I've talked to all my pilot friends. Um, some of them say otherwise. A lot of them say the same thing. But... Just main topics that are hard are weather and aerodynamics, I personally think. Um, so aerodynamics, aft CG, forward CG, four forces of flight. Um, what what does make an airplane fly? <laughs> like, look, do some research, check into that. Um, check around, ask questions. But, so I've also heard of people asking about weight and balance but there's not really anything I can do about weight and balance because that's pretty much aircraft specific so focus mainly on aerodynamics because that kind of implements a little bit of weight and balance but in the long run those are the two topics that I had the hardest time with and I still have the hardest time with aerodynamics gets better day by day but weather is a slow progression Anyways, so happy 4th of July this week. I hope everybody is doing well and I will see you guys next week.